Hi guys, welcome back to another video. We're going to be trying to tackle quite a difficult part of the Tartaria narrative, which is something that I'm still not sure of myself today, and it's why I have not touched this subject yet on the channel. It's American Tartary or Tartarian America, and we're going to be looking at the possibility that Tartaria was in fact, at least in some part, in America. When it comes to Tartaria, this is definitely the most difficult place to find information about. If you look on YouTube or other blogs and forums, Stolen History, I think um, most people will probably focus on the idea of buildings in America being older than they seem. Settlements and cities growing to have huge populations much faster than they should have done. Some people even suggest that things like the railroads were actually dug out instead of uh, built. You know, things like this. We're not going to be touching on any of that stuff. As you know, on this channel, we try to focus on what we can find in the historical data. We don't really try to touch too much on speculation or things that we can't find evidence for. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Doesn't mean it did happen. It's just not what we do here. Uh, we, we don't do that here. We look for things that we can actually find evidence for, and then we talk about that. If you want to speculate on what might have happened as a result, or the consequences, then that's up to you. But we talk about what we can find, and this is something that, like I say, I have avoided for quite a while because the information out there is just so little and I didn't want to provide something to you guys that was fantastical without being able to back any of it up. So, for example, on Stolen History, on their main article about Tartaria that was posted uh, a good few years ago now, I think about 2020, um, I, one of my first videos was actually on this, but I ended up deleting it because at the time I really didn't have much knowledge on Tartaria, so I ended up deleting it because they do make a lot of mistakes in this, I must be honest. They do sometimes give you some good information, don't get me wrong, and definitely good sources and links. But yeah, anyway, so coming from Stolen History, this is their, their biggest article about Tartaria, and they made the claim in this map of 1652 that Tartaria appears to have control over North America. And I'm not 100% sure on what the basis for that claim actually is. I've brought up the, the high quality of the map. I think the the reason that they're suggesting that it's controlled by Tartary is because it's the same colour, which is kind of ridiculous, because as we see, Europe is, is one colour. Uh, South America is the same colour. So are they trying to suggest that Europe and South America are the same, same team? Uh, I'm not really sure. Africa is obviously one colour as well. So is is the African continent a whole country? No. I think the whole reason that they're, they're saying that it's part of uh, Tartary is actually because it's coloured yellow and so is Tartary. Although, if you see the corner of Tartary here, it's, uh, it's green. If that is the reason, that's pretty stupid. I'm um, going to be honest. Because, you know, there's, these two are the same colour and they're definitely not one giant country. Uh, Africa isn't one giant country. We do see over here that we have some text written about America. So looking around, a lot of named places, but there's nothing that indicates any cities down there or anything. Over here as well, I'm not going to translate the whole thing, but it basically just talks about Columbus discovering it and then other people doing it afterwards. But notice that the date is actually 100 years incorrect because Columbus discovered America in 1492. Rather curious, isn't it? That they, they seem to make that mistake. Got it out by a whole 100 years. Going back to stolen history, uh, don't worry, by the way, I will be showing you some decent evidence that could suggest that these things are different. Just going through this first. And then the other thing that they mention on American Tartary is, they do say the jury is still out on this, but there are some indicators that Tartary was present in the North American continent as well. There obviously are no official historical accounts, but some bits and pieces of info suggest just that. You know, it goes against what they said before about that map seemingly showing the whole of North America being under Tartarian control, because it's just kind of ridiculous. But... We're going to talk about the reality of it, because that's a bit of a, a nutcase claim. But it's, we're going to talk about the reality. So the main things that they, they go off is this person that you may or may not have heard of called King Tartarax. And then there's also this map here. And it does actually, it provides this source here from this book for the text. And I wanted to see the map, because the map and the text are separate. He's just stuck the text over and he hasn't provided a source of the map. So what we do is we'll have a look at that text itself and this book is by Uzziah Priest from 1834 is called American Antiquities and Discoveries in the West so you can check that out for yourself and they've got a whole chapter here the voyages and shipping of the Mongol Tartars and settlements on the western coast of America but what we're actually going to do is we're going to come back to this book shortly because there's something else that connects with it that I want to bring up first because this goes into detail on that so first we're going to have a look at uh, a map and whilst it's uh, it's not quite the same we can see uh, with this one that we're trying to find that's got 
pink on this side, the green here and the yellow down here and Hispania Nova. It's a similar thing. Hispania Nova here, you can see this area here. So maybe it's trying to suggest that this area is uh, is its own region. I think they're trying to suggest that this is Tartaria and then obviously the Spanish come down here and the Europeans have come over from this side. So I think that's what they're trying to suggest is that this is Tartarian. This map as well has a very similar thing going on about it. Uh, once again, 1492. So they've got it correct on this map. But you can see that they've got this place called Quivera, which is connected to Tartarax, which we're going to talk about shortly. Uh, but yeah, it is, again, similar similar thing. Hispania Nova, uh, this side here where we think the Europeans are coming. And then this, which is what they're suggesting, is uh, the Tartarian sections. So it definitely wasn't control over the whole North American region. I think, if anything, it will have been the the West Coast. It is actually important to remember that the... The main migrations of Native Americans are actually from Asia. Uh, the, the thing is, though, the official history will tell you, looking at this haplogroup map here, that they came over 10,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago, 30,000 years ago. I think the most recent ones they'll say is about four, or 5,000 years ago. But anything after that, they say it didn't happen, which is curious. Why, why were people able to cross these oceans 5,000 years ago, but they weren't able to do it 1,000 years ago? The original idea behind it is the frozen land bridge theory, that the they were able to cross over the Bering Strait and then move south from there. Then you've also got them sailing around these islands up to Kamchatka and then going across that way. But that also can fit in with the land bridge theory because of the lower water levels, 150 meters lower at one point. But then we have this, this one down here, which is evidently a water crossing. And they admit that 5,000 years ago, people did cross over to America on boats. So King Tartarax essentially comes from this uh, this story to do with our Spanish adventurers that were looking for gold. This man here, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, and essentially what it was was having a look for the seven cities of Chibola, the seven cities here. And the seven cities corresponded to El Dorado, Paititi, City of the Caesars, Lake Parima, Manoa, Antilia and Quivera. Today it's located around the Arkansas River in central Kansas, that's what they say anyway, and it was not a city of gold, and it was just a community of Wichita people, that's the official thing. So where do the stories come from? Well, well, from one of the historians, uh, one of the expeditions, it says, in the year 1530, Nuno de Guzman, who was president of New Spain, had in his possession an Indian, one of the natives of the valley of Otixapa, who was called Tejo by the Spaniards. This Indian said he was the son of a trader who was dead, but that when he was a little boy, his father had gone into the back country with fine feathers to trade for ornaments, and that when he came back, he brought a large amount of gold and silver, of which there is a good deal in that country. He went with him once or twice, and saw some very large villages, which he compared to Mexico and its environment. He had seen seven very large towns which had their streets of silver workers. And there were also reports given by four shipwrecked survivors of the failed Narvae expedition, which included uh, this fellow here, another Spanish explorer, as well as a Moorish slave named Esteban Dorantes. And when they returned to New Spain, the adventurers said that they'd heard stories from the natives about cities with great and limitless riches. So when we talk about the lost cities of gold, this is definitely connected and of course the official history is that when Coronado and his other adventurers arrived at Cabola in 1540 they couldn't find any gold and it turned out all the stories had been made up. See from this map here of the Coronado expedition we can see where he supposedly went and where he found out that it was all nonsense. Uh, the forum also provides a load of other pictures that show Quivera and its different locations that we're just going to have a quick peek at. This one here showing it on this corner. Here again it Reminds us that 1492, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Some of these are pretty bad quality, but again, it's over on this left-hand side. You can see they did believe it to be at somewhere called the Anian Strait. So that's what they called the Bering Strait before, and they believed it was a lot more south than it actually is. But interestingly, which kind of goes against this, uh, this whole notion, if you read this here, it says the indigenous of this region, after the manner of the Tartars, live in tents, having no cities. One more showing Quivera on the left, 1492 again. So it is quite interesting that that one thought it was 1592. I should probably let it go, but another one here. And again, this one says a similar thing in the corner. Here the people in groups through the plains in company in that way, intense after the manner of the Tartars and they lead a rustic life. So pretty poor English there, but basically the people here, they live in groups and just like the Tartars, they live in tents and lead a a nomadic lifestyle is what they're trying to suggest. 
and this one again this one making it appear much more like alaska or something in my opinion looking you know circle of antarctica up here looking way further north because people hypothesized that it was down near california possibly and then of course looking inland but quivera definitely looking like it's on the coast so that journey that they took the expedition inland no wonder they didn't find it because i, I would say this looks more like uh northwest america getting much further up into towards alaska which would make sense because of the migratory route that they would have taken over the Bering Strait. And another final picture. So yeah, you can see up here, we've got China, Cathay, the Mongol areas, missing quite a bit of Siberia. Uh, and that's because they just couldn't get up there. Don't forget, the Russians didn't make it to the edge of uh, Kamchatka until about 1690. It was only after 1690 that you're ever going to see a map showing Kamchatka properly. By the official history, anyway. Up to you if you want to believe that. We can see this text talking about Quivera saying the many different lost cities like Atlantis, lost continent of Mu, Kublai Khan, uh, Xanadu, and it's basically saying the seven cities of Kabul and Quivera, they fall into the same category. It says it's a city born in the mind of Coronado's conquistadors through their greed for gold. The kingdoms of Quivera and Anian are located on maps of Western America, but they had no more existence in reality than Thor's Valhalla or the abode of the Olympian gods. That is the official line for Quivera, that these guys didn't exist. And before we move off of King Tartarak, since the actual Mongol Tartar movement into America, we do have some decent stuff to look at, by the way, so make sure you do stick around. Um, we've, we're just going to have a look at this book, this Garden of the Gods, because I did find a mention of uh, King Tartarak in here, which was quite cool. And it's just down here, Amateur Rodeo, 1910s, um, and it says... The 1910s brought an economic slump to the Colorado Springs. To offset this slump, some residents sought to draw tourist trade by staging a historical pageant about Indians and the 16th century activities of the conquistadors in New Mexico and of old King Tartarax of Quivera. So, King Tartarax of Quivera. Obviously, people point to the fact that Tartar Rax is like Tartar Rex, aka uh, King of the Tartars. Tartar itself obviously sounds like Tartars. Uh, so that would be, you know, King Tartar King, obviously trying to suggest that it's a, a mistranslation and it's essentially just the Latin for King Tartar of Quivera. Uh, 